The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Traders Chat. I'm here joined with Lou, again, our senior trader and mentor in the trading community. How are you going, Lou? Good, mate. It's good. Going good. How Happy are you? Back. Another week in the markets down, another week towards our long-term goals, as you like to say. Yeah, another week down, another week another week towards our short, medium and long-term goals. Trading right. and... So, yeah, sorry. So this week, uh, we have a few topics to cover. Nothing major in the crypto space. I think the, the main point that we want to talk about is the interest rate announcement, which is due tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see how that uh, affects us in the coming weeks and how that's affected us in the past. But first, uh, before we get stuck in, we'll have a quick word from Craig about our sponsor, BitGet. Just a quick word from our sponsors, BitGet, you know, to keep the lights on and all. Trader Cobb and BitGet have partnered up as we've done extensive research on what we believe to be the best trading platform for margin traders on the market today. We've got a full tutorial on how to raise orders and how to get access to your trading account, as well as a 10% trading fee discount if you click and sign up with the link below. With great liquidity and great order systems, this is the premier platform for us going forward. Join up with the link in the description to get 10% off your trading fee. All right. So, yeah, um, as I said just before, we have an interest rate announcement coming up as we have done for the past 12 months. Uh, last year was pretty pretty hard with some interest rate increases. Um, it came on pretty heavy and they've started to ease off and it looks like we could be in for a 25 basis point increase uh, this week or tomorrow, I should say. Um, and this comes based on our inflation data that we spoke about last week. So that will put our um, interest rates at about, I think it's 4, 4.5, 4.75 or something, um, which is, you know, pretty high, pretty high. Yeah, 4.75 it is, which is pretty high. And we've seen that affect the markets over the past, ooh, last year, past 12 months. Uh, the S&P has been in a in a heavy downtrend, same as the crypto markets. But yeah, what what do you have to say about this, Lou? Do you think it will affect the markets? Um, I've noticed something change. Like I've noticed a few things. So first of all, obviously, like as a trader, I and and, and solely a price action trader, like um, I only look at the chart. I, I don't I don't I don't take into account uh, news or anything i just look at patterns on the chart and profit from that but i have noticed a few like and i also don't trade correlations but i've noticed a few things shift in the market when you look at the market every day you can see things change mm. um and signals really good signals are normally really really clear and uh i'd be interested to see what the announcement is tomorrow is, is it tomorrow so it, it's tomorrow for the US, uh, but very early Thursday morning for us. Okay. 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 Cool. So very early Thursday morning Australia time. Um, just because the US dollar is in a very strong downtrend and equities and crypto are in a strong uptrend. Mm. And so what that suggests is, is that the US dollar is normally a safe haven. So all last year when there were successive interest rate uh, hikes, the US dollar, you know, went to a whatever high, like it just kept on going up and up and the equities and crypto kept on going down and down. And that's kind of shifting. And also feel a bit of shift, like a shift of sentiment in the market, I guess. Like, it's like everyone's completely forgotten about FTX, uh, <laughs> completely forgotten about the bear market. And you're seeing stuff like right now on Twitter, like crypto trading, day trading, trending. So maybe there's some type of shift of sentiment there as well, um, mixed into it. So this is interesting to see what the announcement is. It's what happens in bear market rallies, right? They, you think that the bear market's over, everyone starts buying back in, and then more pain. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but true, true. That's a good point. And what do we know? And one and one fact about bear market rallies, I'm not sure about it in the share market, but um, definitely in Bitcoin, 
um, like talking about Bitcoin specifically, is that the intraday rallies in Bitcoin during a bear market are higher than the intraday rallies during a bull market. So they're way more vicious. <laughs> way more vicious. <laughs> they're way more vicious. Like, it's, 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 it's not just one bull out of the paddock. It's like it's a herd of 50 wild bulls just out of the paddock <laughs> wrecking havoc. <laughs> we don't want that, uh, but we should prepare for it just in case. But um, prepare for it. we'll jump into that. We'll look at the charts uh, in a minute. Uh, but first, we just want to talk about um, a news event that caught my eye uh, just before was the Prime Minister of a small European country called Montenegro is uh, meeting with the CEO from Ripple, so the XRP, um, about the possibility of a digital currency in the country. So... I haven't read too much into this. I'm very interested to see what does happen, but we're starting to see, I shouldn't say we're starting to see, we're continuing to see countries uh, look seriously into digital currencies as a form of uh, payment within the country and they're you know, potentially the main form of payment. So the most recent one was El Salvador, I believe is now using Bitcoin as a form of payment. And now uh, Montenegro could potentially be the next one. Have you heard about this? I've, I've been keeping track. Uh, I've read a few news articles, like in our Discord channel, there was a news article about the about El Salvador paying off its bond, so its loans, which it used to purchase mm. bonds, and all the bonds are in Bitcoin. So um, I heard of El Salvador. I haven't heard about Montenegro, but the CDBC, like the central CBDC, sorry, the central bank digital currency for individual countries is like that's the thing now hey, like, mm. it's like it's going it's going ahead it's, yeah. And, yeah it's, yeah, it's like it, very interesting like imagine if we get a few more countries come on board and say look we're done with fiat money everything is digital well what's you know look at banks now um how how much do we use as a as a consumer like how much Physical money? Do you have in your wallet? I have zero, zero physical dollars. Maybe five, a five dollar note, like nothing. Everything is digital anyway. Yeah, like I've got like fifty bucks. Yeah, Sorry, fifty bucks there. But um, yeah, you're right. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. For 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 developed first world countries, one hundred percent. There's no, mm. there's no space for. Uh, fiat currency, but then comes the issue of privacy, like with a central, with a digitally issued issued currency by the government, you, you, you have no control. Well, that's right. Yeah. Well, they can seize like, your account. Like zero. Yeah. I think, uh, I think um, it was a Kanye West actually uh, came out and spoke about how after his running with uh, Adidas, his bank accounts got seized. And he couldn't withdraw or deposit funds into his bank account. And he's like, imagine if this is the power that banks have with me, how much power do they have with other people? Well, yeah. Well, what happens if it's something a bit less? Well, sure. And, and but what happens if it's something a bit less than that as well? Like, what happens if there's like another pandemic and the government says, um, you know, for whatever reason, you're not allowed to access your bank account because you, I don't know, you didn't get vaccinated or you, um, I don't know, or you, or you, or you broke the law by going into another suburb or, or mm. something like that. So I think there's like a, I, I don't know, I just see a darker side to it, especially coming um, out of the times we've just been through and like, you know, the government had a lot of power then. Um, I know like my business when I was still working as a geologist was severely affected and, um, yeah, just be, just be interesting. Where, but then that's why you got Bitcoin. Exactly. That's why we've this got Bitcoin. Alternative, I guess. That's why we're seeing the shift to decentralized currencies, decentralized platforms. That's really exciting. But I think we've got a few little hurdles to get through before that becomes mainstream and adopted by everyone. And one thing is hacking and phishing we see it and hear about it all the time uh, unfortunately this week kevin rose the ceo and founder of proof uh, which have the moonbirds collection he had his wallet hacked or uh, he'd been fished i think 
he clicked a malicious link on a website and approved a transaction and he ended up losing 1.1 million dollars worth of nfts um it's sad it's very sad um but unfortunately we hear about it all the time we hear about people getting hacked or people getting scammed or people getting fished and it's just this is one thing that the crypto space needs to fix before we can really move on in a safe and effective manner uh he just reading this article he ended up losing uh it was one autoglyph which is a super rare uh, expensive nft i think the floor the, so the floor price of those are 345 eth he lost 25 art blocks uh worth around 332 eth and some on-chain monkeys worth about 7.2 eth so yeah a collective amount of just over 1.1 million dollars worth of nfts gone i think he did manage to seize uh one of them one of the the high profile nfts before it was hacked but yeah it's just so unfortunate to hear that this continues to happen and if you're in any nft discord channels it's almost a weekly thing where someone has got hacked or someone has been scammed or someone has clicked the the wrong link and lost all their nft so i really do believe that this is something that the crypto space needs to fix um and we need a very effective simple solution to to wallet security well so yeah use um cold wallets we use cold wallets for our nfts and they work really really well they have such a clean interface now really easy to use if you have a cold wallet you can't get hacked yeah exactly like oh, i'm i'm so know. surprised at how easy ledger is to use that's i've got a ledger x is that what you've got yeah i've got a ledger x as well yeah yeah they're just so simple to use for for your nft collection they've and become oh. so modernized as well like you can yeah. see your nfts displayed on the ledger interface and stuff and it's great it's really good it is to be honest it is a bit of a pain to set up and get organized if you are new to nfts or new to crypto you know, you have these things called seed phrases and, and uh, pin codes and stuff to get into them. It can be a little bit daunting, but trust me, it is worth the time to go through and get yourself a cold storage wallet, transfer your NFTs onto that and call it, say, a vault that you don't touch you and you don't connect that to to any websites or any other wallet addresses. You just keep that for your the majority of your funds or your NFTs and then you just transfer in and out of those wallets to say hot wallets and that's where you do your trading or your your transfers or you're buying sell uh, out of those wallets and it just helps limit exposure to your to your vault or your cold storage do you find it do you find it all like do you think it's weird that this guy didn't have his nfts on in cold storage i think it was his cold storage i think he oh. just clicked the wrong link on a website. Oh, he was transferring off his cold storage, like say to a hot wallet, and then he did it to the wrong address or something. I believe so. Or he visited a website um, and there was a malicious link on the website. So when you click a, a link on a website and then you approve the transaction, you just have to really make sure that you're approving the right transaction. And that's where scammers are getting people. Or I think it's called phishing. Yeah, right. I remember this happened a lot uh, in 2018. A lot of really, not a lot, but a few really big name people in the space in 2018 during the bear market got hacked. Mm. Like they, And people accused them of like, shifting funds to dodge tax and like why would you do that um how could that happen but a lot of those claims actually actually turned out to be true yeah <laughs> in the end yeah, yeah, yeah have you ever been yeah. scammed or hacked i've been scammed before i've never been hacked scammed, uh, through, crypto or? scammed through yeah like um when i first got involved in crypto uh in 2017 i got i basically there was this company called dignity and they were going to buy gold back they're going to start a gold back crypto and they went this huge thing where they got the 
ex CEO of Uniqlo or something to be on their board. And he was this really, really old man. And this other guy kind of took over and they said they bought a fake uh, office block in Bermuda mm-hmm. and all this stuff. And they just stole everyone's money. And like, <sighs> It's so like they they bought a whole there was a whole office block for sale in Bermuda and an investigative journalist went there following the project and he's like yeah it's for sale they've just bought it mm-hmm. and even the government of Bermuda like welcomed them and stuff and then they just just vanished. I've um, and they just took everyone's money. I got scammed through Illuvium, one of those gaming crypto platforms. <gasps> oh so yeah, Illuvium were offering us. You know, they're staking. This is when they're staking. It just started. So I've been part of the Discord group and um, I clicked on the staking link and connected my wallet and started staking some tokens. But turns out it was not the correct Alluvium website. Uh, it was Alluvium, you know, has two L's in it. One of the L's was an I. So it, it looked the same. And the dashboard, everything looked the same. But as soon as you connected your wallet, everything was gone. So yeah lost a few eth to that which was pain in the butt but since then uh i double and triple check all of the links that i'm clicking yeah i only use the official links in any discord channel so um way early on in 2007 like when i first started trading crypto and there was no like there was only a couple of exchanges and you could use like a anonymous swap website on the um on the internet to like just swap your tokens I just, I swapped, you know, what was a lot of money for me then. It was like 3,000 US bucks or something, 4,000 mm-hmm. US of Litecoin. And uh, I just sent it to the wrong wallet address. <laughs> some some random person just got all this Litecoin. That's... And I was just like, oh. It's so annoying, isn't it? And when this is fixed, <sighs> I, I really believe the crypto can take off. But even now, it's just a pain transferring funds from one wallet to another wallet. You know, you're always double checking and triple checking. And then you've got layers of security, like 2FA and email codes and phone codes. Yeah. So many Look, the best, I think the best thing is QR, are QR codes. They're the best thing ever. Yeah. Yep. The QR, where the wallet address is in the QR code. They're the but best. But then you're relying on having a camera. It's a bit hard. 100%. To do yeah. yeah. 100% yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if they can, you know, you and I, were not smart enough to come up with some (laughs) technology to tackle this, but I'm sure there's many smart people out there that can fix this. But as soon as we do, and there's a a mainstream platform or way of doing things that is more enticing to say the older population, um, I I really think crypto can take off. For sure. Yeah, 100%. The convenience. Yeah. So... It's unfortunate for Crow. Everyone calls him Crow, Kevin Rose. Unfortunate. Um, but sometimes, you know, we just have to learn from these mistakes and I hope it never happens to us and take the, the appropriate steps to make sure it doesn't happen to us. But I think it's time to bring up the charts, Lou. Let's talk about Ooh. the yeah, biggest and bearish candle this mm-hmm. year on Bitcoin. Right. Just that, just quickly on that, that, just quickly, that. just quickly, one really easy thing to protect your computer, just always have really up-to-date antivirus software. It costs like 80 bucks a year. <laughs> Do it's that. Really good. It's seriously yeah. good. It's good. Anyway, okay. Um, yeah, the biggest, biggest the biggest candle bearish year. candle ever this yes. year. Wow. There's a few news articles out there. So, wow, the news is so, so bearish. So good. Yeah. So, yesterday's bearish candle on Bitcoin was 3.91%. And it's the most bearish candle we've had this year, Lou. What let's are we have do? A well, let's have a look. I'll just bring up the charts here. So give me a I love how news articles just post this this crap. Like, news articles are lure just you crap. In. Lure you into these. Especially in market news articles. All, all, let's face it, the majority of news articles crap. But like, especially market news related. It's let's just, let's just forget about how the run that Bitcoin's just had. Let's just forget about that and focus on the one red candle you, you know what I like when FTX when FTX went down, 
the news didn't focus on FTX at all. They focused on like something totally random. Yeah. <laughs> CZ's tweet about it. Like, Not the fact I don't know. that FTX are doing all this, but let's focus on CZ's tweet. Yeah. So the biggest bearish candle. Wow. What a load of, just what a load of crap. Bollocks. Look at this. They'll just find anything to write about as well, right? Like biggest bearish candle. I read something. Um, I read something the other day. It was big, Bitcoin's biggest run ever on a 25-day basis since 2010. <laughs> <laughs> really, you can make anything like if you, you like, can make anything yeah, like, up yeah anything up and and, and watch fixed. whatever this whatever this announcement comes um like our time or on wednesday on wednesday american time um it's gonna be like jerome powell was dovish and then he was hawkish but then he was dovish again because because Saudi Arabia, Saudi decided to start trading oil with Russia. Mm. <laughs> it was something like that. And the markets rallied. Something. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get some clicks through. Oh, yeah, it's so funny. Fun. So what is actually happening? So we could do something like this. And we'll, explain, we'll explain this in terms so people that are listening to the podcast can understand. Uh, we do have the chart. Yeah. Up. So we do have the chart up here. And we're just looking at the chart and what's happened since we lost the podcast, basically. So mm. since last Tuesday, funny, it's we're in the same pattern on the chart than we were last Tuesday than we are now. We're in a consolidating pattern. And we're in a consolidating pattern um, and we're between both these levels here and... We're in a really solid, strong uptrend. A what really the solid, values, strong uptrend. Levels. So the bottom level, I've, I've put in at 22,432. Hmm. And the upper level, I've put in at 23,858. Maybe that upper level could... The upper level has changed a lot. Like You could even take that upper level out and have a level above that maybe... At the 25K and, mark. Yeah, or 24,443 or yeah. something like that. Um, That's so the, it's uh, quite a quite a big range. Um, I've got these level. Right? Yeah, sorry. Go, go on, Reese. Yeah. Oh, so we expected this, right? We just had a really, really strong move up. We've got big announcements coming up later this week. And the crypto market is just, it's just grab walk sideways, which is fair. You know, it's done that well, for ironically, it's expected. Well, ironically, it's done it. This month, this month, like we saw that here in mid January. And then we saw a big consolidation through here, like from November to December. So it's pretty yeah. normal. Uh, one thing we can say with certainty is, is that whenever there's a period of low, whenever we enter a period of low volatility, like we, like what happened here and like what happened down here, it's always followed by a period of high volatility mm -hmm. to the upside to the downside we don't know yet. but um that's a weekly level there in pink at 26,543 and then interesting what i find interesting about this chart as well if you're going to build the buying scenario out the next like really well respected like we have a monthly level at 28,000 so that's a while off and then we've sort of got another monthly level around here at, um, like you can roughly put it in, probably around like if we just put it through the tops of these weeks, I'll just change that to my monthly candle color. And then if we go to the daily, that monthly, yeah, so 24,500 mm. to 25,000. That's actually coincides with a monthly and a daily level. So if we do break that, 30,000 is really the next stop. But if we don't, you know, let's see, let's see how, let's see how low we go kind of thing. It'd be a solid bear market rally. That's right. 
So I guess we'll see. Plan of attack for Bitcoin in the next few days. Until the next podcast, plan of attack for Bitcoin for me is so we've caught the meat of this trend, mm. and I'm not interested in trading. I'm not interested in going long or short because if I if I trade within this range with Bitcoin specifically, it's just not good for intraday trading. You know, like you go up, down, up, down, up, down. What I will do is if we get a break of this low level here and we get a daily downtrend, I'll start looking for shorts. If we do see price creep up into this monthly level and daily level to the upside, I'm going to be looking for some type of breakout off that upper level. Yeah. So just waiting for a bit of verification. We're, we're trend traders, right? And at the moment, we just don't have a great trend. Uh, you can definitely no. trade if it's your style to trade off levels, you know, reversals or bounces off levels. But that's not our style. We just like catching the, the chunk of the, of the larger moves, which is what we've done the last few weeks. But now it's time to sit back, let the market consolidate and decide on its next move. And yeah, watch those levels closely. And, uh, you know, fingers crossed we get some nice breakouts setting up um, on a higher time frame and then catching yeah. the majority of the next move. Yeah, yeah. And and look, always remember the market's entitled to do whatever the market wants to do. Like you can't force mm. your will on the market. It's already made its mind up what direction it's going to go. We just got to wait for it to tell us. Yeah. Um, do we have the uh, the US dollar? Do you have the US dollar chart there? Now, this is a chart yeah. we like to talk about in the live trading floor, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, look, the US dollar chart we like talking about in live trading floor just because generally in the past, um, so in the past when we've had a weak US dollar, it means, you know, like because Bitcoin's traded against the US dollar, all these pairs, apart from Bitcoin pairs, that is. Um, the perpetual contracts are trade against the US dollar. So when the US dollar is downtrending, it means we normally have a stronger market and uh, like to the upside. Mm. And when the US dollar is uptrending, it means we have a, a stronger market to the downside. But what, what I was talking, sorry, what uh, we've been talking about is, um, is how the US dollar, so let's say through this period here, so from July 21 to October 2022, so let's say the majority of last year, the US dollar has been very strong. Mm. And that's because it's been used as a safe haven. Now, what we've seen is the US dollar going to this big downtrend, as you can clearly see here. And... Um, it's been really good to watch. The reason why we've been watching live trading floor is it's just been a really good textbook example of, of a downtrend. Monthly level, broken. And then it went to the next monthly level and it broke this monthly level. Now we're sitting on the next monthly level here. So um, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to watch. And we're just kind of... Popping in on this monthly level here, hit a little bit of resistance as you'd expect. And, um, you know, we'll see if it does reverse, I guess, or do we bust that monthly level, go lower and continue this really nice downtrend, um, which would signal a risk on environment. So people wanting to put their money in to equities opposed to take or into that. crypto or into crypto. That's correct. <laughs> We're, um, I like talking about this because we're seeing a solid level there on the US dollar. We're seeing a very solid level there on Bitcoin as well. And if we switch to the S&P 500, we can see that it's just confused. You know, on this weekly chart, we're seeing a, a lower high and then a lower low and then a lower high and then a higher low. And we're just sort of bouncing in this range between sort of 41,000 and 38,000. Just find the my US 500 chart. Yeah, so yeah, so again, pink levels. Oh, sorry, white levels are monthly 
levels. And these purple levels are what daily levels I could discern from the chart. So, um, yeah, like you're right. And we're kind of just in this big monthly range and we're trading to the upper end of this monthly range. And if we zoom in on the daily chart, just a bit like this, you'll just see like there's not much here. Mm. Kind of there, but you can't really, you can't pencil anything in can't pencil any precise levels or anything like that. Um, it's just all over the place, like you said. It just, it just feels like we're building up to a big move. We are de- we, we, that is one thing you can say with, one, with absolute certainty, I reckon, is that we're 100% building up for a big move. We Man. just don't know which direction that move is. But if you did, right. if you wanted to really look closely... You could make a case that that move is pinned to an upside move, just by just well, by solely seeing the US dollar weak and equities and crypto rally. Solely based on that, it won't take much. Like if we if we do see that level break on the US dollar, you know we have also seen in the past price be factored into upcoming interest rate announcements and then on the day we see some fluctuations in price but then the big moves don't happen on that day they generally happen in the lead up so um, maybe that's what we're seeing now maybe we're just seeing a bit of a sell-off across the board to factor in an interest rate announcement but, you know, who knows? We're not here to try and predict the future. We're here to talk about the markets and what levels and what the price action is doing on the charts. And at the moment, yes, we're in a consolidation period and it feels like we're winding up for a big move. 100%. That's, that's something we can say with certainty. We're winding up for a big move. We are. 100%. Um, all right. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about on the charts, Lou, before we wrap this up? Um, no, not really. Just want to remind everyone to focus on what matters, which is price. Yeah. I'll just bring up the Bitcoin chart here. Um, so focus on matter, focus on what matters, which is price and levels. And then this is what we treat it, teach at Trader Cop. We overlay the indicators afterwards. And so just focus on that filter out all the noise and uh, something that I was reminded of that I reminded myself in my trade journal this week is manage your risk. If your risk is managed, you can be in positions and not, you can always trade from a place of confidence and not a place of fear. So always manage your mm. risk. Don't um, overexpose yourself. And um, yeah, just exercise a little bit of patience and you'll be profitable and consistent in this tough market. Perfect. If you want to hear more of Lou's wise words of wisdom, jump into the Trader Cobb Discord uh, community if you aren't already. We'd be happy to have you. Reach out to myself or Lou. Uh, We're more than happy to have a chat and talk everything trading. But I think that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining, Lou. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us, everyone. And yeah, jump into Discord. It's popping if you're... If you're trading, if you're interested in trading, it is get, it is going off in that chat. If you're in that paid community, the last two weeks, and you took the trades that we were taking, that's pretty good gains there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the paid community, it's, it's been good. I'm going to have a few calls with people from the paid community tomorrow. Yeah. Um, just, just doing a bit of trade mentoring and stuff like that. So that'll be good. Perfect. All right. And Craig is back as well this week so keep an eye out i think look uh, craig will be back on the podcast but i'm looking forward to doing some more with you lou and with craig fingers crossed same risk thanks okay. guys thanks guys uh have a great day and we'll chat to you guys soon the trader cob crypto show talking business in blockchain 